Well, again, this is Confirmation Sunday. My message today is for the confirmant. And it's less of a sermon and more of a conversation with them. I don't want to put Lily on the spot. She's a lone confirmant here at this service. So you're going to be her confirmation class. And you're going to listen in with her as we have this conversation about following Jesus. Because what these young people are doing today is after nine to ten months, again, of prayer and study and reflection and uh, diligent work with Sue and Brian and the adult mentors, is publicly stepping up to follow Jesus. And so what I want to talk to you about and them about is following Jesus. First of all, to follow Jesus means we understand he expects us to fulfill his teaching. Following Jesus means we know he expects us to follow his teaching. And what are those teachings? It's first of all to love one. Now, loving one another doesn't mean you have to like everybody. doesn't mean everybody has to be your BFF, your best friend forever. But it does mean this. It means that every person you meet will be treated with kindness. That every person you meet will be given courtesy. And that every person you meet will be treated as a child of God. That's what it means to love other people. Don't have to be your best friend. Don't have to like them but you must treat them with kindness and courtesy and as a child of God. Secondly, it means avoiding judging others. What does it mean to judge others? It means to say or believe that someone is not worthy of God's love. It is to say or believe that somehow you are more worthy or I am more worthy of God's love than they are. It is to say or believe that someone doesn't deserve God's connection and God's attention the way we think we do. That's judging others. And Jesus said, don't do it. He thoroughly said, forgive others. There's not one of us in the sanctuary who can forgive easily. If you've really been hurt, if you have really been offended, if in the root of your spirit you are really pained by what somebody has done to you, there's not a one of us in this place who can forgive easily but we're expected to do it with God's help. Fourth part of teach, Jesus' teaching is that we help others. You know that he talked a lot about helping the poor. He talked about reaching out to the lonely, the disconnected, the disadvantaged, the disenchanted. He talked about giving a warm, caring spirit to those who haven't been loved by others, doing anything we can to help anyone who is truly hurt. So Lily, congregation, Richard Smith, the first thing under following Jesus, he expects us to fulfill his teachings. However, none of us will do that perfectly. Lily's going to mess up. Richard Smith messes up. You mess up. Her parents mess up. Her grandparents mess up. There is no person alive who doesn't mess up in following Jesus. And one of the things I want Lily to know and all these confirmants to know is that they are removed from the burden of being perfect. While being called to follow Jesus and live up to his expectations, none of them on this day when they commit themselves to the Lord are expected to be perfect. Because every single one of us messes up, don't we? So what do we do when we mess up? Three things. We admit it. We claim it. We seek God's help, second thing. And we do better. You're going to mess up. We all mess up. But when we mess up, we name it, we seek God's help, and we do better. Third thing. This morning, I want Lily and these confirmands and you to know is you'll never feel better about yourself than when you follow Jesus, ever. Lily, I preached a confirmation sermon some years ago in another church. And in that sermon, I talked about one of the ways that we step up to follow Jesus is to step up against bullying. 
And I've actually said that in this church in confirmation sermon. And in that sermon, I talked about if you want to honor Jesus, young people, then do everything you can to stop bullying. Stand up against the bullies. Stand up for those who are being bullied. And some weeks later, one of those confirmands came out the door of the church. This was another church. And she said to me, Reverend Richard, I've never felt better about myself. I said, well, tell me about it. She said, this week, I took to heart what you said in your sermon on Confirmation Sunday, and I saw somebody being bullied, and I stepped right in, and I told them to stop it, that I was going to be her friend, and I was going to be in her corner, and they needed to stop treating her that way. And with a big smile on her face, she said, Reverend Richard, I've never felt better about myself. Lily, you will never feel better about yourself. And I will never feel better about myself than when we follow Jesus faithfully. Don't have to do it perfectly again. But none of us will ever feel better about ourselves, right, than when we're faithful. Fourth thing, Jesus is ready to help. Lily, Jesus is ready to help you. He's ready to help all of us. But a wonderful story about a, a true story about a five-year-old who came to her father preacher and said, Daddy, who's bigger, you or Mommy? Well, he thought she meant who's taller, so he said, Well, honey, I'm taller than your Mommy. And she said, No, no, Daddy, who's bigger, you or Mommy? And then he realized that she was asking the question, Who has greater authority in the home, Mommy or Daddy? And he said, well, honey, we are equally big. And then she said, well, are you bigger than Jesus? And he said, no, no, honey, nobody is bigger than Jesus. And then the little girl thoughtfully said, well, he must be big, big, big. And he is. Lily, I want you to know this morning that Jesus is bigger than any problem you'll ever face. Jesus is bigger than any concern you'll ever have. Jesus is bigger than any worry in your life. Jesus is bigger than any person who may ever put you down. Jesus is always bigger than anything you face. And congregation, you need to hear that as well. There is nothing you face that is bigger than the Lord Jesus. So whatever we face, Jesus is there for us and with us. So reach out to him. He's just waiting. Waiting for us to reach out and seek his loving care. Final thing, Jesus wants the church to succeed. Lily, today you're going to join the church. This church. But it's a part of a worldwide church. And it's an imperfect church. And you know that, right? This is not a perfect church. None of the churches are perfect. But on this Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate that the church is Christ's community that he wants to succeed in the world. And one of the things I want these confirmants to know is we need your help. We need you to help us make this a better church. Sue and Brian Richards, the associate youth director, shared with me a book titled less Jesus, More Jesus and Less Religion. And in that book is this quote. Instead of attending church for a certain type of music or a particular we should be attending church because we love Jesus. I like that. He should be the real reason we gather together. A lot of people call it a place full of hypocrites. But some like to roll up their sleeves and help solve the problem. Lily, with you and your confirmands, we need you to help us solve the problem. Help us be a better church. And here's my pledge to you, Lily, and to every one of these comments. I want to hear what you think. Sue wants to hear your suggestions. Brian wants to hear your suggestions. I want to hear your suggestions. I'm going to write every man this week. You'll get a letter from me, Lily. And in that letter, I'm going to remind you that I welcome you emailing me, calling me, sending me, sending through Sue and Brian any idea you have for this being a better church. Because in the end, we want Lily to help us succeed in witness to Jesus Christ in the world. So what does it mean?
to follow Jesus. It means, first of all, to accept that he expects us to follow his teachings. But it means we understand and celebrate we'll never do that perfectly. It means he's with us and ever available to us. He is bigger than anything we face in this life. And we'll never be happier with ourselves than we're And may the church of Jesus succeed because we roll up our sleeves and we do our part rather than just complain. Thanks be to God.